SQL Scalar Functions Scalar Functions Scalar Functions operate against a single value and return a single value based on the input value so more or less one record then we also have one output so here are examples of scalar functions so we have functions that are for strings and for numbers and we also have for dates and we also have logical functions so examples in u case l case so these are string functions then round mod these are examples of arithmetic or numeric functions now and date diff are examples of date functions concat is also a string function that will join strings so i will not be um, discussing them one by one but let's just have an, an example of these scalar functions so in this case i have a table named m and then i have a field e name so if you're going to look at my query it says you select e name and then i have your u case E name and then L case E name length E name left of E name with the length of three so left then right E name with the length of three from M so we're going to look at the output E name so this is the original name then U case means uppercase E name so if we're going to look at the output the name is converted into uppercase L case is now into lowercase length it's the length of the string or the name so uh, if you notice here this name contains five characters so we have here five and the next name contains six characters so we have here six and then for left e name with the length of three this returns the leftmost uh, characters of the e name so the three so the, because we have here three so the three leftmost characters of e name that's why we have dai and then for right e name this returns the three rightmost characters of e name so in this example we have i s y so and so on and so forth so these are examples of scalar functions so here we have another example select salary so that we show the salary round salary zero and then round salary negative three so when you say zero that is uh, to the nearest ones but since in our value we don't have decimal places so it will be just the same and negative 3 will be for negative 1 that's negative uh, tens hundreds thousands so that is uh, rounded off to the nearest thousands now you notice here that the original value is 12,500 and then so the nearest thousand is now twelve thousand but for thirteen five we added five hundred it becomes fourteen thousand so there's actually a rule that if it is let's say the preceding number is even then we don't add to the next number to the next digit or the next number rather. so for if it is add so in this example thirteen so 3 here is add and the next number is 500 so we add 500 to the next value so again in this case it is even so instead of adding 500 we don't add 500 so it's just 8000 but for this one it is add add number so we add 8000 here so again this is an example of a numeric scalar function here's an example now a date function we have the now the now function returns the date today based on the system date and also the time and the date diff you can place your two dates and it will return the number of days between these two dates here so that's the date now and the date on january 1 so that means there are 38 days between today which is February 8, 2021 and January 1, 2021 so there are 38 days here's another example 
So I have here select e name. Of course, that will display the name. Salary, it will display the salary. Commission, it will display the commission. And I have here salary plus commission. So if we're going to add a number with a null value, the result will be a null value. That's why if we're going to look at this column, most of the values are actually null. So if the commission is null, then the value will also become null. But what if we want to add, we want to get the total uh, maybe earnings of the employee by adding the salary and the commission? So what we're going to do is we have this, we have the if null function. So we have your salary plus if null commission comma zero. That means if commission is null, then the value will be substituted by zero. So in that case, we can now add salary plus zero. Then I have written up 15,000. So that's the use of if null. We can place here the substitute value if this field or this expression maybe is null. Now I have here another example using the if function. So I have here ename, salary, and then I have here format, comma two. So I have here format, whatever the value is, comma two. That means it will be for uh, the number, the output will be formatted with two decimal places. That's why if we're going to look at the output, we have here, it is formatted. We have the comma separator and we have two decimal places. Now let's take a look at the if function. So if we have here the condition, if the con if this condition is true, then it will do this part, salary times 1.05. If it is not true, then this is the part that will be done by this function. So we have the condition, the true value, and the false value. So that's an example of the if function. So again, the format function. So this is the same. Uh, this is the same function a while ago, but this time around, <coughs> excuse me, this time around, I want to format the salary also with into two decimal places. So I have, we have here two decimal places, and that ends the example for scalar functions now let's proceed to the aggregate functions so we have for now sql aggregation or uh, we're going to use aggregate functions and uh, so we have to aggregate that's why it's called sql aggregation <laughs> so aggregate Functions. Aggregate functions operate against a collection of values, but return a single value. That's why it's called aggregate. Note if you use among many other expressions in the item list of a select statement, the select must have a group by clause. So there should be a group by clause if you're going to use other expression rather than the aggregate functions. So we'll see more of that as we go on. Here are some of the commonly used aggregate functions. We have AVG that returns the average count. We'll count the column. So again, without a null value, null values will not be counted. The same is true with the average. Average will not include the null value. Count asterisk, that means we're, we're going to count all rows, whether it's null or not, it will be counted. Max column returns the highest value for that column. Mean column returns the lowest value for the column and sum returns the sum of the column. So let's have examples. So in this example, we have select count asterisk. That means it will, it will count all the records. Sum salary, then that's the total salary. And then AVG salary, that's the average salary from M. Now let's compare that with this query select count MGR so instead of asterisk I place your MGR max salary mean salary so max salary will give us the highest salary and mean salary will give us a lower salary but I'm using the same table I counted MGR you notice I have 13 records but in MGR I have only 12 here so that's because 
again, maybe MGR, there is one row in MGR that contains null value. And then, we can also combine aggregate and scalar functions. So in this example, I'm going to use sum, but I'm going to use sum only if the depth ID is equal to 1. That is where I'm going to get the sum of the salary. If not, I'll be using 0 for my sum. That means I'm, not, I'm adding nothing. So if depth ID is equal to 1, salary 0, so that's the function that we will be getting the sum of again so only the salary will be added if the id is equal to one and then the result of this will be formatted with two decimal places and then i have here my column alias so actually these functions are similar except that for the next one i have your department id2 and then for the next one i have your department id3 so I want to get the total per department, but instead of having it by row, I'm going to place it in a, some sort of a col uh, three columns. So this will be my output. Department 1, I have to know the total for Department 1, the total for Department 2, and the total for Department 3. So this is just to demonstrate to you com uh, combining aggregate and scalar functions. Now we have the group by close. The group by close was added to SQL because aggregate functions like sum return the aggregate of all column values every time they are called. And without the group by function, it was impossible to find the sum of each individual group of column values. So the syntax for the group by is select, we have the column, then maybe sum of the column, so the aggregate function and the column from table and then we have group by column. So whatever you place here should be placed on the group by clause. If you have two columns here that are uh, that's not part of aggregate function, then we also have two fields here. Let's try to look at an example. So if you're going to look at this, these are also the values that we have produced a while ago. But this time around, uh, this is a lot simpler than what we have we have done last time so select that id I have here count asterisk some salary from m but this time around instead of the overall value we're going to have it grouped by that id so the result is i have here now the count for this department id and the salary or the total salary for this department id and the same is true with the next row so I have here the count for department ID number 2 and I have here also the count for department number 3 and these are the salaries per department. Now we also have the having clause. Having was added to SQL because the where keyword could not be used against aggregate functions like sum and without having it would be impossible to test the result for result conditions. So the syntax for having function is select column sum column from table group by column so the same with the previous one but on the last we have having some column and then condition value so but this can be possibly not only sum so it can be any aggregate function so <clears throat> again this was on the upper portion was our query in the previous example so we have the ID count and some salary without the having clause. But on the next query, so the same, but I added having some salary is lesser than 40,000. So that means the sum of the salary will only be, or the output will only be uh, displayed if this condition is met. That means the sum of the salary is lesser than 40,000. So say if you notice here, the first department because it has 56,000 which is more than 40,000 was not included in our result set. So again, in the, by conclusion, uh, we use aggregate functions like sum. And then if you want to get 
the values of the aggregated values per group then we have to use the group by clause and if you want to filter results of aggregations we can use the having clause so thank you